Hey everybody, boys, this is BK Forrest. Welcome to the Weekly Technicals for the Majors. For your dollar, dollar yen, and pound dollar, July 1 to July 5, 2019. And it's really the politics and economics edition because as we move into the weekend, obviously the big, big event, which we'll only know about on Sunday night, Monday morning to you guys, is the G20 meeting between Z and Trump and whether that provides any kind of scope for relief in risk. Um, and if indeed there's some sort of a soft detente or rapprochement between the two parties, Certainly, it's going to be very positive for yen, positive for yen crosses, um, and generally positive for capital markets. That's a big, big if. The default um, assumption here is that nothing new is going to happen. At very best, they're just pretty much going to say they're not going to escalate tensions. But you never know. Um, the crazy thing is we could be in a situation where they could escalate tensions if both parties disagree vehemently. Uh, at which point, I think you're going to see a very, very sharp negative move and perhaps a retest of the lows. So a huge amount of movement here, front of the week, is going to be very much reactive towards whatever the political status is here. Now, if the political status is negative, what's interesting is that as we move into the um, end of the week, we're going to be facing a lot of economic data, which, if it is also negative, really is going to pile on to negative risk off flows as we go into the week. However... Um, if we have a situation where the political uh, result is mildly positive and that's followed by negative data, I think the markets are going to shrug off data on the assumption that data is backward moving. So it's kind of a very interesting one-two dynamic here of just how the front of the week is going to dictate analysis on the back of the week. Meantime, we've just been at a standstill for most of the week. It, the, none of the ranges have really changed. Um, we did test the 106s in, uh, in dollar yen, but that's about it. There was really no other action. Uh, Euro really st staying 13 to 15. Dollar yen is 106 to 108.50. And pound really staying in very tight range. This probably was one of the quietest, quietest range weeks we've had in a very, very long time with virtually no breakouts whatsoever. The calendar next week is uh, much more uh, significant, although we do have, of course, Thursday, July 4th holiday in the U.S., and that's really going to slow the markets down significantly, both middle of the week and pretty much end of the week, even though, for example, um, everybody's going to have to drag their uh, their butt back to the desks on Friday in the U.S. because of non-farm payrolls. Um, it's still, I think, going to be a very, very funky week as far as flows go because a lot of liquidity will be gone. In the meantime, we start the week with on the, on the major side with U.K. data, with U.K. PMI, um, U.S. ISM manufacturing, which, which we're very, very bearish on because uh, all of the uh, local Regional indices have been very negative, and that suggests, I think, that there's clearly a slowdown in U.S. manufacturing as we go forward. We'll have Eurozone PPI here. We had Eurozone CPI come out, which was mildly positive. It's really a non-event at this point because the, the inflationary pressures are still very, very uh, muted in Europe. Um, and then into Wednesday, um, we have a whole bunch of sort of U.S. data front-loaded ahead of the uh, uh, July 4th holiday. We have the ADP employment data. We have the UK PMI services um, data sets um, and the uh, Eurozone services PMI. Data. So it's just a lot of um, meaty uh, economic data. And here the critical thing is, do we see stabilization? Do we see recovery? Do we see decline? It's all going to be very, very interesting to look at. And finally, into the end of the week, we have the U.S. non-farm payrolls, of course. That's going to be critical in a sense of what the market is. I think I don't think anybody's ex expecting any kind of torrid growth here. Um, although the market is looking for for a bump in um, in payrolls from 90 to uh, to 155, uh, it's still I think important though to note that really what what the market is looking most forward to is continuation in, in average hourly earnings and a continuation of momentum of wage gains. If we don't see that, I think that creates even more of an incentive for the Fed to cut rates and puts further pressure on the dollar to the downside. So that's the fund backdrop as we enter into the week. Now let's take a look at the charts here and just see what's going on there. So let's start with the euro here. And the euro, um, I think is interesting because we've made this big burst up, but we ran, remember we talked about the idea that 14, 1450 was gonna be a pretty serious stall area. It certainly has been so far. The range in the euro has been just minuscule. We've really had absolutely no movement one way or the other. Uh, it's been incredibly dampened. The thing about this kind of a stall, I think, is that while it looks bullish because we're certainly well above the SMA, we're holding well, the longer this kind of a stall goes without any, the longer we go without making fresh 
daily highs, and, and the most recent high was around 14, 12, three days ago, um, the likelier the possibility of distribution to move back down to the 1300. The 1300, I think, is going to be the first serious area of support and is likely going to hold. And then after that, of course, it's going to be the 1200, which is really the very, very big area of support. If we break both of those, that's going to be yet another fake breakout in the euro. This whole base really gets destroyed, and we don't have any um, significant continuation here. So um, the failure here, I think at uh, 1450, we get a couple more days without taking out the 1400, 1425, would really suggest kind of a double top formation and a move back down uh, to below 1300s. Cable also looking very, very, very weak here. We've been able to, absolutely unable to move beyond the 27s three days in a row here. Um, we, ha we are well supported at the 20 period SMA here at 2065, but a break below here, sort of I think a close below here, well, it's very badly. It suggests that market again starts to worry about a no Brexit deal. Um, Johnson has been making lots of noises. Uh, UK economy this week is going to be interesting to see if that shows even further deterioration, because if it does, then it really suggests that um, UK is kind of going to be floating by itself in, into oblivion. All of these forces sort of the economic reality of, of being cut off from the world's biggest market um, could begin to really weigh on cable, much as um, the hope here is that Brexit is not going to be a hard one. The, the, the more uh, vitriolic the rhetoric, the stronger the, um, um, the case that the Tories sort of are unwilling to compromise, the more likely we get more you know, secondary pressure here. And of course, if we move back down to these levels, it really opens up Pandora's box of just a, a much stronger, a harsher sell-off. I mean, it sort of turns this whole thing, which looks right now as kind of a base ready to break to the upside as the last failed stand of the longs that could then just create a vertical move to the downside. So I think it's very important to watch this. A break a close below the 20 SMA here would be a pretty in in significant signal of the strength of the shorts. Um, and I wouldn't take it lightly. And I think it could really unwind all the way to the downside here on a technical basis. And then finally, finally looking at um, yen here, yen looks you know, dollar generally looks better than uh, than you would think. This is clearly a nice, clean double bottom here with a spike low. We're holding bid here. Um, the only thing that could really scuttle this whole thing is if the Chinese in the U.S. just basically have an incredibly uh, unproductive meeting and, and both sides walk away uh, threatening to do further damage to each other. If we can come to some sort of a love fest over here, it really opens up the possibility here of closing above the 108s and reprices, most importantly, I think, reprices all of the interest rate risk back to the upside. The interest, remember, bonds are grossly overbought, grossly overbought. This has been a one-way trade um, and just itching for some short covering over here uh, to the upside. And if we do get the yields back up to 210, 215, it really busts us open here through the 108.50s. So to me, the really critical area here to watch for next week, 108.50. We can, if we close above that, that opens up the gateway all the way out to 110, really brings in the longs uh, and brings in the flows. So the bias here to the long side, if we can get those levels, if we can't, it could very well be a retest of the lows as the week progresses. Wish you guys the best luck, the best trading. Bush Lossberg, over now.